In this video, we're going to demonstrate the use of MRA fusion as a guidance system for the last extinct graph. Um, here we can see a Furahim MRA, which has been performed, which can be manipulated in exactly the same way as uh, a CT scan and multiplanar reconstruction. We use Furahim when a patient has an elevated creatinine, cannot be given standard contrast agents, and cannot be given gadolinium. And here you can see how we can optimize in exactly the same way in a workstation uh, to get the ideal angles for, implement, for uh, implantation. In addition to this, this uh, can actually be fused on top of the patient. Uh, prior to doing this, however, uh, you can see we've drawn in a center line um, and we have marked in the workstation the origins of the, the carotid artery, the subclavian artery, uh, and this has, it can then be pushed into the angiogram and overlaid so we can actually use it really as, as, as the guidance technique. Here we've actually overlaid the entire uh, 3D construct. However, uh, often this uh, obscures uh, the uh, underlying devices. And so in this situation, you can see the, the marks represent uh, the, the neck, the subclavian and carotid and the nominate uh, takeoffs. And you can see the gantry has been moved into left anterior oblique position, opening up the auric arch. And at this point, we haven't given the patient any dye. Uh, the most distal of the uh, purple marks represents the, the distal landing zone uh, for the stink grab. Um, the wire was curling up inside the aneurysm itself there here. It's been uh, now replaced with the curved lundequist wire. And over the curved lundequist wire, we're going to uh, pigtail catheter will actually be brought up in parallel with this. This will be used uh, to, uh, number one, uh, validate the fusion which has actually taken place. And secondly, to guide the stink wrap placement. What you'll now see is the uh, angiogram being performed and showing, you see, the accuracy of fusion. Sometimes you've got to actually adjust these because if, if there are devices in there, it can cause some sort of deformity. Um, and, and so it's important, basically, to uh, validate these. There's not a lot of deformity where it actually occurs in the aortic arch. Um, and so you'll see um, the, the, the fidelity of these um, uh, markers as they're being placed. The green um, uh, plus signs are where we mark the intercostal arteries, and that's actually used uh, to try and spare intercostals if at all possible. Here we've now, uh, the stink graft has been blown up into place, in this case it's 34 by 14. Uh, we then inject and confirm the origin of the subclavian artery. Uh, we're going to have to move the device forward just a little bit. Uh, we almost want to impinge upon the subclavian artery to maximize uh, the proximal end. You can see the accuracy of the fusion uh, off the original MR scan. Uh, the fusion is done uh, by uh, creating a uh, cone beam CT and uh, in much the same way as you do CT to CT fusion. The device has now been uh, placed um, and an angiogram uh, it partially deployed here then fully deployed. Uh, I believe we did do some angulation of the proximal neck to uh, ensure there was adequate uh, opposition to the inner curve. And then the completion angiogram will show that the stink graph basically has uh, as it resulted in complete exclusion um, of the uh, uh, saccular aneurysm in this particular situation. So here's what the uh, looks like in place. Uh, pigtail catheter has been brought up and we're going to go ahead and do the injection and demonstrate uh, after ballooning the proximal and distal uh, area of the stink graft and demonstrating that um, the, the aneurysm has been successfully excluded. So here we're just completing the ballooning, we're actually removing um, the balloon catheter and ballooning the distal attachment site, followed by replacing this um, removal of the balloon catheter and then the com performing completion angiogram using a 20, 20 injection. And so this avoids us having to give a lot of dye preoperatively. The fusion allows us to minimize the amount of intraoperative dye. And this now concludes this demonstration of how a Furheim MR can be used to fuse and guide deployment of a thoracic stain graft. Thank you.